Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and I'll be working on my first doll of 2019 in this video. Happy New Year! I'll be showing you the costume construction and the face up, and the hairstyle for this one I've done a few times before, so if you'd like to see how I did that, check out my Tattered Fairy Sally video part 2 where I show the hairstyle and the final looks. I'll put a link or an iCard for that one. So for a very long time I've been wanting to work on a Snow White doll, so for this one I'm using an Apple White. And I've also wanted to revisit my Tattered Fairies Fairy Tattered Fairies line and do a second run. So the Snow White is the first and a second run of Tattered Fairies, so there's a few more coming soon, so stay tuned. So you saw me make a skirt out of some lace I gathered up, and I set that aside for later. So now I'm using this craft fabric. This is a fabric that I found in a craft store like Joann's Fabric or Michael's near the felt section where they have sheets of felt. They also have sheets of different kind of vinyls and glitter fabric. So I held it up against the doll just to measure and I drew it out and cut out a corset. I'll be using more patterns going forward. They have found that they make it a lot easier, but I used to just work because I did so many different kinds of things, I work sort of organically, but patterns do make it a lot easier if I'm using the same basic shape. So I made this sort of like sleeveless top and then I'm cutting out some notches so I can make it a little more fitted on the stomach area. And I'll sew those notches together. And I'm just kind of trimming to make sure it all lands in where I need it to and that it fits right and it's even. So then once I put it on I cut the back where it will fit correctly and then I add a snap. I also use some sheer navy ribbon for some puffy sleeves and I just gathered that ribbon up with some thread and stitched those on and then I added a little bit of thin red ribbon to give that snow white look. Now I'm just curating some little fabrics and laces and buttons and bits just for just for easy access while I design the strips of fabric that I'm going to use for the focal point on the skirt. And here I have some like ivory fabric, but I decided to add some red. And this part is just super fun for me. It does take a very long time. I've, I did several layers of different uh, laces that I pulled out and added those to the skirt. And then these are sort of the focal point. They lay atop, on top of all of that. And I'm using different kinds of some antique lace, some just vintage lace, some new um, antique buttons, vintage buttons, and just little bits and bobs that I found along our travels or things that were gifted to me. Some of the lace that I'm using in here was brought back from Belgium from my, my sister gave me. And some of the buttons and beads that I'm using I found at some antique stores in some of the cities in like Alabama and Mississippi that we've been traveling. So I just love, it gives me an opportunity to go through these things and just look at all these little bits and put them together in just an artistic way. And I'm also able to share them with whoever decides to purchase the doll. So I'm sorry, some of this is off camera. I really apologize, but what I'm doing is just kind of playing around with the different layouts and making little collages of fabric and lace and adding buttons and bits just where I think that they look right. There's no real rhyme or reason, it's just kind of trying to get a balance. And here I'm getting some of those long tube-like beads and just stitching about six of them in a row. So I like just different different textures and patterns. 
so that when the skirt, like these strips are all in the skirt, so when you ruffle the skirt or change the pose of the doll, you see different things each time. So this one has tons and tons of different bits, different laces and fabrics, and I added several, several layers to her skirt, and it took me a very long time. These are on the high end of my doll, so I apologize for the high price tag. I also made that little apple out of uh, epoxy sculpt, and I ended up adding it to the wings that I made. I also made wings for this doll, so if you would like to see how I made those, check out my wing making videos. I have a couple different wing making videos, so we'll add an iCard for those as well. So on to the face up. After a few coats of Mr. Super Clear, I'm laying in some of the white of the eye and just kind of getting the general shape of it. And then I'll start in with the waterline and the upper lid. So I did want to mention I recently uploaded a video for my new Buffy the Vampire Slayer and I got some comments, well actually just a com one comment that the quality was poor and so when I viewed it on my phone, my phone it appeared fine but when I watched it on my computer it indeed was distorted. So through some extensive research we discovered that YouTube sometimes displays videos at a lo lower quality to the viewer on a computer as opposed to when watching it on the phone. I'm not really sure of all the details or how that works, but if anybody does, I'd love it if you would share with us in the description or in the comment section. That would be really helpful. But so if you're having trouble viewing one of my videos because it's blurry or pixelated, if you could try clicking the settings button on the bottom right corner, it's the gear shaped icon next to the closed caption, and then you select 480p or higher, and then the video will reload and play at a better quality. So I'm sorry for the inconvenience there. I'm not sure why that happens. And if anybody knows if there's something that I can do on my end to improve that, I would really appreciate it. But thank you so much to the person who let me know. And if you guys run into any other problems like that, please let me know. That's so helpful because I don't want to have a video out there thinking that it's fine and, and not getting any views because it's um, poor quality. So thank you so much for letting me know. So back to the doll, of course, the uh, Snow White has these ruby red lips, so I'm using just a straight pan pastel in red, and as always, the, the supplies I use are in the description box below. If there's any missing or you have any questions about any of the supplies that I'm using that's not mentioned below, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. I'm doing some shading, um, keeping her, I wanted to make sure to maintain her pale white skin since she is snow white of course. So I'm just using the straight, sort of the, I think it's a burnt sienna tint, and these are both tints from the pan pastel line. And just using those for the shading along with maybe a little bit of uh, pink or adding a touch of red into them. I just don't want to do too much shading or too dark of shading so that her skin starts to appear more tan. I wanted to keep that really pale look. Because I knew I was going to add some really rosy cheeks also. adding some shading to her Cupid's bow. I did go a little bit darker there with some of my custom mixes. It tends not to show up in the Cupid's bow area or the um, philtrum. I can't remember what that's called below the nose. I think it's the philtrum. Is that right? Any <laughs> anyway, so I tend to use a darker color there because it doesn't show up if it's lighter. And when you look at faces, it is a little bit darker under the nose because of the shadow. So I wanted it to look like her lips were parted slightly, so I added a little black in the center there. And now I'm breaking out my Karen Dashes. So I've got to be honest with you guys, I was really struggling with this one at first. I'm really happy with how she turned out, but I was really having some trouble. I, it seemed like I had done a, a few commissions. I was kind of in commission mode for a while and not just doing my own creative stuff. 
which this is. This is just kind of my own, you know, creation that is not a commission. And getting back to it was really hard for some reason. I was having, like, my hands weren't doing what my mind wanted it to do. So when that happens, what I do is I pull out my Caran d'Ache pencils and they're just so creamy and they work so well. They seem to really get me back into it. They really pulled me out of a tough spot. So I'm not associated with Caran d'Ache in any way, but I just love them and they are on the high end. But if you tend to struggle with learning, they, I, I, while they are high end, it's really well worth the price. I think I think so much of this company mainly because the quality of these pencils they're the museum aquarelle if you're interested and I'll make sure that link is in the description box below so they like I said just really pulled me out of a tight spot once I started using them I things started to flow a little bit better and I'd like to preserve them for just certain colors that I need and just times like this where I really need a push to feel better about what I'm working on. So I was using that, um, it's sort of a golden brown for the center of the eye and then I'm adding some terracotta to the brown of the eye because it looks like in a lot of the movie photos that I saw of Snow White her eyes were kind of a coppery brown or orangey brown so I used some burnt sienna in the in there and just blended it all out with white and tended to keep the outer line a little darker and once I get the general shading where I want it and the color where I want it in the eyes then I start to add more detail in and I think I did a lot of that off camera because I was just kind of struggling with it and then here I ended up going um, just kind of going back to it later and did the eyebrows because like I said I just was really having difficulty with this face up so once I added the eyebrows with uh, with this tiny flat brush and black pan pastel I shaped them up with my favorite pastel sharpenable eraser and then use some black pencil to add the little hairs in and you're gonna see like I said more Caran d'Ache pencils than in normal videos <laughs> So just trying to add a little bit more detail to the eyebrows there and then doing the crease above the eyelid or the eyelid crease and the bottom lashes I also added some shading to the upper eyelid where her eyelashes go just with some black pan pastel so that just gave it a, a little uh, more thick lustrous look to the upper lashes and then here I'm doing some highlights around the eyes, the, around the um, tear duct and Cupid's bow, adding a little bit more blush. And then I also go in with some of my shimmer powder and added some shimmer powder to her cheeks. There you can see I'm pulling those out, the pearl, uh, Perfect Pearls by Ranger. And then once I was done, I sealed it with four coats of Mr. Super Clear and gave her some little highlights on it with some acrylic paint in her eyes and on her cheeks. And then I added some Liquitex Gloss Varnish to her eyes. And I decided to leave the lips flat uh, matte. They just looked better to me that way. I just didn't want to gloss them up yet. Or I didn't feel like they needed gloss to look right. And then like I said, the hairstyle is, you can see how I did this hair in my Sally video. I did the same style, but I did flat iron this one. I rooted her with a soft black alpaca yarn. 
So here are some final photos. As always, if you like this video, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Please also check out my work on Instagram, Facebook, and DeviantArt, or on Patreon for extra rewards. Also shoot me an email if you'd like to be on my email list. I hope everybody is having a great day and happy new year. Thanks for watching. Bye.